So here's the scenario. You have 200 grams of an unknown radioactive isotope. After 63 days, the sample is only 32.67 grams. What is the half-life rounded to the nearest tenth of a day? Well, let's think about what we have and what we don't have. We don't have a rate, so we don't have a K, and we don't have a, well, we don't have the half-life time, but we do have a very particular time, right? So we are given an initial value, why not? We're given a final value, y, and we're given a very specific value for t. Now, even though the question is asking for the half-life, I can't get there right away. What I can find is I can find the k. I can find that rate of decay that ties everything together. And that's really the best place to start. As I told you at the beginning of this section, finding that k is finding pretty much everything in the problem. Because once you find that k, it ties everything together, and it's just part of that formula. It's just like finding like how much do you get paid per hour? You take how many hours you worked divided by, or you take your paycheck divided by the number of hours you work, and that's gonna give you your rate of pay. You might say, I already know what it is. Yeah, but when you start taking out for taxes and all that stuff, you're gonna find like your true hourly rate. Now it's not always gonna be that way. It's not always gonna be the same for working more hours, but it gives you an idea about what could happen if you were to extrapolate that data and go to even larger hours, right? And that's what we're doing here. Once we find that K, it ties everything together. So, Y is equal to Y, not E to the K T. Let's plug in what we know and then find out that K. So we know that my final value is 32.67. Our initial value was 200. E to the, well, I don't know what K is times my t value of 63. And we see here that k is in the power, and we know how to bring that down from the power, which is by taking the log of both sides, but not until we get rid of that 200 in front first. So, divide both sides by 200. Those guys go away. So 32.67 divided by 200 is equal to E raised to the 63K. And now, we take the natural log of both sides. All right, so the natural log of 32.67 divided by 200 equals 63K. Trying to find the K, and that's that's really the linchpin in all of this. So we divide both sides by 63, and now we've got our K. It's not the prettiest number in the world, but it is what we we're looking for. So 32.67 divided by 200, all of this divided by 63. And you know what we're going to do now. I'm going to put this in the graphing calculator and come up with our value for k. All right, so we got the natural log of 32.67. Whoops, my bad. Divided by 200. Almost close the parentheses too soon. All of this is inside that set of parentheses for the natural log. And then divide by 63. All right, so my k is negative. Point zero, uh, let's say, 2876. So 2876. Now, I'm going to go ahead and store this in for x so I can use it later. Thank you very much. So that's my k. But the question here is, what is the half-life? Well, it goes back to what we were talking about in the last video, right? Your half-life is going to be based off of this formula. The natural log of one half is equal to k times t. And where you know the k value, so we're going to solve this for t, which we get by doing the natural log of one half divided by k. So t is the natural log of one half divided 
divided by negative 0 0.02876. And really, I should put the approximately equal to signs right there because this guy was rounded. All right, so going to the calculator, natural log of 1 half divided by this guy, which we sort in for x. And we get this. We get that the half-life is about 24.1. Uh, what were our units? Well, we were talking about days, right? So after 63 days, so my half-life is 24.1 days. And so there you go. We wanted to take the initial values that they gave us, and we use that to find k, and then once we found k, we use that with our formula to find our value for t, which was our half-life. Pretty nice.